hope everyone can see my screen. The first you can react. And is my voice audible? Yes, you are audible. Oh, firstly, I welcome you all to the session two of Innovate Design as part by Product Design Club in collaboration with ESL IIT Madras for the CFL Summer School. And I'm Tarini, one of the coordinator of Product Design Club. And yeah, so we are going to discuss about design thinking and ideation techniques today in our. Moving on. A minute. There is a problem with my screen sharing. Yeah. So today we are going to cover the topic on introduction to design thinking. What basically what is design thinking from the basic understanding of design thinking to deep understanding of design thinking we discuss and what are the phases involved in design thinking and what are the different ideation techniques we are going to use in design thinking process so moving on to introduction to design thinking so what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think the word design thinking. So you can use your chat box or question and answer session to answer. And yeah, what is the first thing that you think of design thinking? You can Type in the chat box. Uh, anything is fine. Anything that comes to your mind. Design thinking. So why do we need to use this design thinking? Why do we need to understand about this design thinking? Come on, guys. Type anything. Uh, yeah, I think the chat is not open. Chat is not open. Question yeah. and answer session? Both are not open. They are open. Like, I'm getting that they are open. Can you check it once? No. Guys, if the chat is no, not open, can you guys react? Yeah, chat is not open. Now, are you able to see? Nandini, is it open now? I can see the chat, but. The guests are not able to access it. Oh. I... Is it open, guys? Just react minute, if it is open. Yeah. Okay. Is it open? It is not open. It is not open. Just check once any setting for that. Yeah, I gave options open, but I don't know why it's people.
this time I'm like, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Can you use the chat now? No, they can't use the chat. Guys, check if the question answer panel is on. If it is on for you, then uh, like send a response through that.
I'm really sorry for the inconvenience. I guess now you can unmute yourself when needed. So when I ask a question, just raise a hand. I'll unmute the one and you can just speak. Continue. So we'll continue with our presentation. Yeah. Introduction to design thinking. So yeah, what is design thinking? And why do you think this is important? So yeah, let's move on to what is design thinking? Design thinking is a human-centered approach to innovations that integrates the needs of people, the possibilities of technology and requirements for business success. So there are many complex words here, like integrates the needs of people, possibility of technology, etc. So to simplify it, design thinking is basically a process done by humans. It all depends on their mindset and how the person is going to approach the problem, how they are trying to solve the problem by the possibilities of technologies they have around and requirements of business around them. So, yeah, this is design thinking and simple words. So, this design thinking is really not a new concept. It was there back from centuries and even longer too. But, but it gained more popularity in the modern business world after the Tim Brown, who was the CEO of IDUs, a company uh, on design thinking. So this Tim Brown, the CEO of IDEO company had published a article about design thinking in Harvard Business Review. So it became really more popular in the business world after them. So as I mentioned, the company IDEO. So anyone know the company IDEO before? Basically IDEOs. So this is the company. Uh, help the world's leading organizations to meet, make future. It was the company who introduced how design can set you apart, help you grow, solve your targets, challenges in this modern business world. So this is one of the top company in the field of product design, which makes many fast products starting from the children playhouse to the Sony gadgets. So this is a famous, really famous company. Uh, so why do you think design thinking is important? We'll get to know that answer later in our slides after knowing all these things. And yeah, coming to design thinking, it is also a non-linear iterative process that teams use to understand users, challenge the assumptions, redefine the problems, and create innovative solutions to prototype and test. As I mentioned, as I mentioned in the slide, it is a process that goes through all the phases. Uh, I guess someone unmuted the mic. Can you please mute it? Yeah, thank you. So. Design thinking is different from other innovations and ideation process. Why do you think it's different? So other ideation process or the other techniques mainly uh, see the problem. They are solution-based, like they need mm -hmm. a solution. Sorry, someone unmuted the mic.
Nandini, if you if you want, you can uh, mute everyone. We have shared a Slido link in which they can ask the questions or answer they want to give. It is there in the chat box. You can see that. Yeah. Okay. Then I will mute everyone. Yeah, that would be better. Everyone can see uh, the Slido link in the um, chat box, right? React, if you can see. Yeah, cool. So whenever you have a question. Oh, I think you are on mute. Can you unmute now? Yeah, yeah. So in between the session, if anyone have any queries or doubt, uh, please type it out on the Slido. Tarani will see the questions in between the session and will try to answer all the questions possible. Yeah. That's yeah. It. Then we'll continue with that. Oh, yeah. As I just told, it, it's a nonlinear iterative process which we can use to understand the users. And yeah, design thinking is different from other innovations. Like this is purely based on solutions and user centric rather than the problem phase based. So it's about the person behind the problem and solution who requires to ask the questions like who will be using the product how will this solution impact the users? So keeping these two questions in mind, we can just make a design that is really need, useful and need, which is needed by all of the users. Then next we'll move on to a quick question. Okay, How does design thinking differ from other problem solving approaches? As I just mentioned, so can anyone answer this question? How does design thinking differs from traditional problem solving? Please, please post your answers in this in the link given in the chat box. Yeah, someone answered it works on basis of need and innovation. Uh, yeah, it is slight similar to it. Come on, guys. I need more responses. Please do respond. Sure, Do you have any problem? Like, you raise the hand. Please, please answer in that. Like, go, guys. Yeah, uh, someone answered it's more consumer centric. Yeah, it's mostly based on human centric than consumer centric. So. Problem solving is tackling the problems, design thinking, waves, and platform or outline upon which applied solutions are most effective. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, traditional problem solving is focused on solution oriented, where design thinking is based on empathy innovation. Yeah, this is a nonlinear and more relate, relational and fluid. 
it focuses on user experience yeah i got a lot of responses on that so to give a brief clarity on it so design thinking is mostly based on uh what can i say like human centric it is design thinking mostly focus on the needs of the users where the traditional thinking mostly focus on the needs of the business and yeah this is one of the main, uh main reason and as someone mentioned it is a where traditional thinking is linear process where this is non linear process goes through empathy cognition ideation that things and yeah it is design thinking is well suited to solve human problems where traditional thinking mostly helps in solving technical issues and it helps in building solution after knowing the problem where in design thinking we observe explore and then make a solution so these are mostly some main common differences between design thinking and traditional problem solving approach and yeah next we'll move into phases of design thinking so some of you may have idea on phases of design thinking so the phases of design thinking includes empathize which understand the user needs define where we reframe the problem idea of where we generate creative solutions and prototype where we bring ideas into life and test where we test a product so these are the five main phases in design thinking and yeah one thing to keep in mind is that this process is not always linear so as i told as i wrote empathize in first define in second uh you may think okay first phase of design thinking is empathize and then defining then idea like that but it's not like when we are solving a problem we first go through one phase and then when we go to another phase where we check uh, all the things and we check again we'll check the previous phase is satisfying the satisfying its needs or the thing we told for like yeah if we go to empathize if we go from empathize phase to ideate phase where we ideate something and then make a prototype of that again in that prototype we may come back to define phase so is the core problem statement of our customers is defined in that prototype or not so yeah this is not a linear process which leads to repeat an earlier stage as we go further for this reason the design thinking approach is often referred as non linear and iterative process and yeah let's move on to empathize phase in design thinking so okay what do you understand by empathize empathy is the foundation of design thinking it involves gaining a deep understanding of user needs desires and challenges so this is the first and arguably most important step of design thinking in building empathy with users if someone text it please repeat the cycle uh can you please specify where you have doubt like i just told it's on non linear process like uh, there is no fixed steps going on first you have to follow this step and next you have to follow this step so you may come back after going through some steps and just look back what you defined in the second step of your process and fourth step of your process like that uh you will get more clarity when i start saying this things and i'll give you some examples too 
so yeah as i told empathy is the foundation of design thinking like in empathize space mainly we concentrate on user needs we uh, understand how the person is affected by the problem we observe how the person uh, is working with the problem and then we find an impactful solution in this empathize space so okay can you suggest me any examples for this like okay for example i'll take uh amazon or flipkart etc apps so it will be difficult for us every time to go to shop and buy things so where they understood this point and started delivering to home and which are like really became famous in these days and not only this amazon flipkart things uh, we we really have a app called blinkit nowadays which is becoming more popular with delivered app uh, for things in okay is it fine now is my voice clear now Oh, is it fine now? Like, please interest him. Okay, it's fine. Thank you. So, yeah. Uh, like Blinkit, which is becoming more popular nowadays. Just a minute, then I'll check my internet connection. Uh, am I audible now to everyone? yeah so we have this app called blinkit which dev, which delivers go uh, things we need in minutes compared to amazon and flipkart so some people may need some groceries or something very quickly so this blinkit is becoming more popular like you can also come up with some more examples like this so can you give some examples yeah someone gave someone texted lens card make glasses affordable and reachable for the masses yeah that is also an example can i expect more problems like yeah cab aggregators like ola uber rapido really they also understand the uh pain of pain point of users like uh users know not needed to wait for long time for the buses or something so they can book this app and go yeah someone gave mintra yeah this is also a better zomato food delivery app yeah this is also nice example yeah audio books these are also some good examples but yeah next these are some examples so the techniques we use in the sympathize phase are such as user interviews observation these user interviews and observation are really essential in, essential in this phase so empathy is all about understanding the users 
Someone asked how is empathy phase related to products and services that are not at in the market and user is not aware of such products can exist. Like first iPhone. Uh, like empathy phase doesn't relate to the users, like, uh, like products. Like it gains the information from users. Like if a user need a phone, uh, okay, you, you just texted like first iPhone. Like uh, iPhone company like Apple may uh, have a team of users and they might be having some questions or something. Like uh, they might be asking users what are the problems they are facing with their current phones? What are the things we have to develop? So someone may be telling like, if there is a smart touch, it will be a better option. So yeah, like that we can just relate. Okay. We have prototypes, right? Even the first time uh, we are still in empathize phase, we'll move to prototype in, in a bit later. Okay. Next, we'll go to define phase, where we reframe the problems. In define phase, the focus is on synthesizing the information gathered during the empathize phase. So in empathize phase, we may get a lot of uh, problems or queries from the users or a lot of suggestions to modify from the users. Uh, someone texted that, well, I guess anything, everything doesn't need an empathy face. Something can be just all together new concept. Mm, not, I'm um, uh, like, it's, uh, I can't tell it's 100% correct. And I guess every product need an empathy, like, uh, we should if, uh, go if we if we want our product to be popular in the market. I guess we need an empathy phase, which is where we prepare products according to the user needs. So yeah. Where and how should I collect all the data for empathy phase? That's what I told. Empathy phase in empathy phase, we collect data from users or a group of people. Like take a mobile phone or smart, uh, yeah, service exactly. Take a mobile phone or smartphone. Like users may be using a, a mobile phone or something before they want to modify it like they don't want the buttons they want smart screen etc cetera, etc cetera. so from that we can make possible then yeah now let me continue with define phase in define phase the focus is on synthesizing the information gathered during the empathize phase to define the core problem statement so in define phase, we really synthesize the information we gathered from all the users and the people around us. And we'll just synthesize and make a core problem statement. Like, uh, let's take again, blink it. So people may go, like, they may, go, they may get many reviews or many suggestions to change, but the core problem statement they defined is time. Uh, they can deliver in minutes, not in days or hours. They can deliver in minutes. That's the core problem statement. So this phase sets the stage for subsequent ideation and solution development. So this phase, as I mentioned here, this phase sets a subsequent ideation and solution development. Next, we'll move into 
ID8 phase. So here in ID8 phase, we generate creative solutions. Uh, we generate solutions for the problem statement. Uh, like we here, as I mentioned in the slide, this ID8 phase involves brainstorming uh, gen and generating a range of creative solutions to address the defined problems. So we use techniques like brainstorming, mind mapping, and scramper, etc., in this ideation phase. So which we learn more in coming slides. So here the problem we'll we'll just refine the problem statement and we'll just uh, start thinking ideas about it. So here the goal is ultimately to overcome cognitive fixedness and devise new and innovation ideas that solves the problem you identified. So in simple, this phase is generally uh, needed for ideas where we take a lot of ideas here. So I have a quick question. So if we if you want to make an app to reduce the wastage of food, what all features can we include it? So come on, put in that chart thing. If we want to make an app which reduces the wastage of food, what all the features we can include in that app? Yeah, we can include a feature of veg and non-veg. We can separate it by veg and non-veg. Yeah, some more. Guys, answer. Uh, donate the leftover food, location, yeah, waste detector, food requirements for each person. Yeah. Show amount of food waste every day. Yeah. A feature to get the food taken from doorsteps. Yeah, this is a good idea. Still, I expect more ideas. We can also use this app, like not only feature what type of face, dry waste or wet face. Okay. We can give how to cook tasty food so it can't be wasted. Yeah, we can give recipe suggestions as mentioned. User food preferences, yeah. Showcase the need people will be delivering food. Yeah, so I got many responses. We can use all these features like uh, to tell in short food community community food sharing hubs where we can notify each other if there is any leftover food or we can just share the food to each other in our uh, apartment or colony or something or we can give it give the food to we or we can notify that to the orphanages or old age homes or etc too and Carbon footprints generated due to food waste. Okay. Yeah, we can make a recipe generator. So we can put all the ingredients we have to generate a recipe over it. And we can also uh, track expiry dates of the food items we bring or expiry items which we had in uh, things or the items which are left over in our kitchen. Yeah, someone uh, someone gave an answer with, that collaborates with restaurants and hotels. That is also a good idea. Can include a menu planner. Yeah. I'm happy that you guys are so interactive. Composting and reframing and restoring. Yeah. So, yeah, we can use such methods 
and we can see all these are ideas we these are just ideas we are not going to judge this is a good idea this is a bad idea this idea will fit this idea will not fit we'll just take all the ideas we have and just start making or putting it into a prototype which we discuss in the next slide so next we'll move on to prototype where we bring ideas to life so you guys gave all these ideas so now we'll think like each like each and every idea is possible to implement or not in this prototype phase so prototyping involves creating tangible representations of ideated solutions so yeah as i mentioned it creates a representation of solution it enables rapid experimentation like where we can experiment our ideas on this prototype so like our idea works or not and iteration and it also allows us to refinement and refinement and enhancement of concepts before full scale implementation before implementing it to the full scale we can refine our concepts if anything goes wrong we can just come back take an another idea and put into this prototype so as you all given here a lot of ideas we can just pick a five ideas from it like for community food sharing hubs recipe planner um collaboration with restaurants etc and data collection etc so and make it a prototype so we can just make a a prototype for this app by making some wireframes etc and just check whether they'll all fit or not whether they are possible or not so that comes to prototype phase and then okay someone asked what are wireframes so wireframes are generally a basic outline of an a website or app like if you just open your mobile and open any app like swiggy zomato or or instagram etc you will just after opening you will just get a page like the main page so that outline of that main page is basically called a wireframe is that clear i hope it's that it's clear next we'll move on to next we'll move on to the next phase called test where we gather feedback and iterating so this test phase generally involves gathering feedback from users through usability tests and user feedback sessions so as the name itself tells testing our product we just give our product to some of the users users to use and get feedback from them so if the feedback is positive and nothing to be changed we can release that product if if they give some any feedback or you should change this or that or your product is uh, does not contain this or your product don't didn't have that feature so again we have to look back look back and we have to as i told this is not a linear process again by that user feedback again we'll go to that define phase we define the core problem of that and then we come to prototype and make and, and then we ideate uh, on that particular problem and then again we include it into the prototype and then again it will come out to test so yeah that's that's what i mean this is a non linear process okay 
So if prototype includes wireframing, then the design and color come under which step? So design and color doesn't come under a particular step, but it can come under test phase. Like if you give a particular design and color to that thing and user may like or dislike that particular color or design. So again, you go back and change it. You got it, right? So, yeah, that's all we see in this phases of design thinking. Next, we'll move into user empathy. So, what is user empathy? What do you think of user empathy? What is the first things that popped in your mind after listening to user empathy? So, I guess you can text what you thought of user empathy. Problems faced by the users, understanding about how users feel. Yeah, it's related to understanding the needs and how user feel, user comfort. Yeah, it's true. What is the need of the people? Yeah, many people are guessing it right. How the user think about the product? Yeah. So user empathy uh, is the foundation of creating products and services that truly resonates with your target audience. What is the need of user and what the market wants? Yeah, user empathy is the foundation of creating products and services that truly resonates with your target audience. Like, uh, this is a concept. Uh, it's not just a buzzword, but a fundamental principle that can transform the way we design and interact with the world around us. So, yeah, as we know, user empathy is the ability to put ourselves in the shoes of users to see the world from their perspective and understand their feelings and thoughts and needs to build a product. It, it involves a deep immersive understanding of us, of their challenges and motivation. Guys, I request you not to text. I'll see all your doubts uh, when I uh, ask you. So I may not see some of your queries. Okay. So yeah, so by knowing, by, by now you should be able to understand what user empathy is. So empathy in contest is user experience design. It, Basically, it has many terms or many definitions. It the base or the particular thing is it is used like or so it is the user experience design which actively listen and observe the users with engaging the with their stories and creating feedback or getting feedback from them. And then we create a solution that truly resonates them. So that's what user empathy generally means. So why is user empathy important? Why should we really stress the word user empathy and discuss it for this much time? So why it is important? because it enhances the user experience. Like, it, it uh, makes users to, uh, how can I say that? Like, it makes users to collaborate with us and tell their experience or problems about that product. It drives, it drives innovation. Uh, when we understand unique challenges, 
we can create a innovative solutions so we can say it drives innovation it builds trust among the users and it fosters inclusivity like it helps us recognizing it helps us recognizing our product by the customers and accommodate diverse user needs and ensure that our designs are inclusive and accessible to all regardless the regardless their background availability circumstances etc so this is the most important uh, most important thing in user empathy we can really accommodate and ensure the user needs so how can we cultivate user empathy among us can anyone answer how can we cultivate user empathy among us someone asked how will we implement this in our idea or venture so when when we engage with the users or when we just listen to their uh, problems and observe their things then we can really know what we want to create as a product for them i hope you are clear i'll i'll give you an example so that you all can get some familiarity and you can understand it better so first answer me this question how to cultivate user empathy among us simply asking questions about the product yeah it is one of the thing but that one is not enough by actively seeking user input yeah in the, by using our own product from point of view of customers yeah we can do that we can build community with all users yeah interacting with the users so let me tell you what are uh the qualities we need to to cultivate user among user empathy among us so firstly we need active listening so we should listen to the consumers or customers and we should and secondly we need user observation like we should observe everything in detail and then we need to create an empathy map to visualize user attitude and map out user journey to identify pain points and moments of delight and then we need persona development so yeah coming as i said the word persona development uh persona means something uh like an imaginable character or something like uh, we are just assuming an imaginable character in our pro using our product and just getting it get, just getting reviews from it so that's how we do persona development uh someone asked what is persona development are you clear or should i repeat it once again like assuming an imaginary character which is using our products yeah thank you clear and then we have to design a product and collect feedback from that and based on our feedback we should iterate or like we if our feedback is nice we can uh, we can successfully make our product into the market if not again we have to go back check where we make a where we made a mistake or uh, do we need any other things in extra so that we can make our product better etc someone asked what is exactly pain points doesn't does that refer to problem and issue faced by users yes pain points is the is like exactly at what point the uh, user is facing an issue or problem with that uh product or etc or app okay 
So let me give you an example. So a healthcare startup wants to design a mobile app to help chronic disease patients to manage their conditions better. So can you guys just tell me now what can what can that healthcare startup can do to develop an app based on the things we discussed before? So we need to basically develop an app which helps the patients to uh, manage or notify about their disease or like uh, how, um, uh, notify to take medicines, etc. Yeah, ask nurses about patients. Can you listen to me now? Like, am I audible now? Can you just text me? Am I audible or not? Yeah, thank you. So yeah, we'll just go back with our question. So someone told just put features like identity or identity of disease, medicines, prescribed time and notification services that helps themselves to take those at correct times. Yeah. 
usage of tutorials, personalized notifications, we can include in that app, use patient's data, we can include that too, personal contact with doctor, yeah, these are all, yeah, keep health track on app, medical history, we can include all these things, so, right, User empathy, we can conduct home visits and observe patients during their daily routines, held in depth interviews with their with both patients and healthcare providers. We can make we can design an app which uh, not only provides medication reminders but also include other features like uh, which connects a uh, voice call feature, which connects come other patients with the same disease or thing, they can also uh, have time-to-time uh, -time reminders for taking medicines, yeah, give workout suggestions. And we can also track and share our progress with the doctors, etc. So yeah, these, this is an example for user empathy. And next, we'll move on to user research. Okay, what do you think about user research? Give me answer for this. Am I audible? What do you think about user research? Type something that comes to your mind. User background research and requirements, understanding your core user base and what identifies them overall, understanding the target in market, research about customers, just comfort or just comfort or product, selecting the target audience. Yeah, all these answers come under this user research. So, user experience research is systematic investigation of our users in order to gather insights that will inform in the design process as mentioned here and why do we what is the purpose of user research so as mentioned here the purpose of user research is to put our design project into the content like into the users and help Help, which helps us understanding the problem we are trying to solve, which tells us who the users are, what context they'll be using in our product or service, and ultimately what they need from us as a designer. So that's all. That is the purpose of user research. And as mentioned here, the end goal is to create products and services that people want to use so yeah the basically the main and end goal of this user research is to create products and services that people want to use so i have a line written down which says the mantra in ux design is some user research is always better than none yeah, as it mentioned, we need to do some user research uh, than directly releasing our product into the market and then facing a lot of struggle or not getting much profits we expected from that product. By, so by doing user, user research, we'll get to know some or more information about our product in the market. So that's all about the user research. And then we'll move into ideation techniques. What do you think about ideation techniques? As I mentioned in that idea phase, we have some ideation techniques. So can anyone answer what ideation techniques I mentioned in that idea phase? Come on, guys. Answer. Come on. I'm, I'm asking, yeah, brainstorming, mind mapping, scramper. Yeah, 
those are some ideation techniques we have. So yeah, as you all mentioned, various ideation techniques such as scramper, mind mapping, brainstorming, storyboarding uh, are some valuable tools for stimulating creative thinking, stimulating creative thinking and generating innovative ideas. We are going to learn more about this ideation techniques and deep about this ideation techniques in further. So first comes brainstorming. So what do you know about brainstorming method? Any guesses? Dump ideas. Someone told dump ideas. More. I need more. Okay, then. Uh, let me tell you. It is one of the powerful tools for generating the ideas and solving problems. Uh, brainstorming is more than a group activity. We do it in a group. It is a structured process that can lead to innovative solutions and creative breakthroughs. So what exactly brainstorming is? It is a method of generating ideas to solve a problem or address a challenge through spontaneous and free flow of discussion. Yeah, it is a method like uh, which generate ideas by a group activity. Like everyone are uh, really involved in that uh, idea generation process. So it is popularized by Alex Osborne, in who is an advertising executive in 1940s. See how from how old this brainstorming exists. So the core principle of brainstorming is to create an open and non-judgmental environment where participants can share their ideas freely. This is the core principle of brainstorming. So here we can just create an open and non-judgmental environment so that participants can share their ideas very freely. No one is going to judge what your idea is. Like, uh, you'll get more self clarity when I come to a example. So I request please everyone to mute their mics. Yeah. Why do we do brainstorming and why is it important? Can anyone tell why brainstorming is important to us? generate ideas yeah we get a variety of solutions uh the correct statement is we get a number of solutions more number of solutions uh to try to solve problem yeah yeah as you all told this is important to encourage the creativity and then we get a diverse perspective yeah someone mentioned different perspectives from different people so that we Every people can learn from each other ideas and every people can just uh, come through their ideas. Okay, let's take an example. So, bottle company want to be beat the all other bottle companies and be in the top of the market. So what ideas generally we take for the, or let's just brainstorm for this problem statement. What bottle company should be in top? We should modify the bottles. Yeah, new design. Still, you can brainstorm your all your ideas. Everything is unique bottle design. Rising stars, solids. Can you please put the mic who unmuted their mic? Oh, Aditya, I'm getting disturbance from your mic.
या लो प्राइजेस पर बॉटल कोल्ड एंड हॉट फीचर्स कैपलेस बॉटल इज दैट पॉसिबल कैप क्वालिटी ड्यूरेबिलिटी डिजाइन या रीयूजेबल डिजाइन इको फ्रेंडली मटीरियल या ऑल दिस आइडियाज कैन कम अंडर ब्रेन स्ट्रॉमिंग adding features like self filtrating use different types of materials yeah easy to carry yeah there are many ideas yeah someone texted what price should be target yeah what are for current leaders in the yeah unique branding yeah all these ideas we can take and then make a prototype from this so next we'll move on to next a uh, type of ideation technique that is mind mapping as you all can see in the figure it's all about this so this is also one of the method used for idea generation mind mapping is not just a method for note taking or planning it's it's a way to visualize the thoughts and ideas to make it easier understand so all the ideas we can connect from them. it helps so it also helps in structure information allowing us to see the relation between different pieces of data as we have as we see in the diagram the thing which is in the middle of this mind map is the core problem statement so a company want to launch a product from uh and beat all other companies so this is the core problem statement they want to uh launch a product so what are the branches or ideas we can take so the one is target audience and then the next comes market research timeline budget market strategies all these are some ideas like we want to go through it and then for every branch there is a sub branch where we can see like for target audience who we can target like what we can what we can target by like by using user personas or demographics for market strategies we can collaborate with content creators influencers we can post on social media and do a social media campaign and for budget we can see the cost which takes for production of chain which takes for advertising etc and for timeline we can just see okay when we when should we pre launch or when should we give our product to user testing when when should we launch our product and what happens after launching our product and market research we can see computer analysis industry trends customer surveys etc so the main thing in mind map is to keep in mind is we connect all our concepts together and make a idea out of it so it is invented by tony guzan in 1960s so why mind mapping you may and uh, see why do we use mind map so we use mind map to enhance creativity improve memory retention and simplify complex info so every ideation technique has their unique uh how can i say unique feature like in brainstorming where we that's don't judge any person and we can generate many ideas where in mind mapping we can just simplify the complex information and just connect with the other things so every ideation technical is different from other but leads to a same output mm -hmm. i'm not giving any example for this and um, we'll move to scramper so scramper is also one of an ideation technique used uh used mostly so so the name itself can tell in scramper defines a 
lot like in the name of scamper as stands for substitute where we uh, see stands for come okay let me explain this so from the name of scamper where it stands for substitute we can just see we can replace a part of our product or service with another process and make it useful to the product or uh, useful to the persons using the product or not and C tends to combine ideas, process the process our products into more efficient output. Like we can combine anything with our product or not. Or okay, let me give you an example to understand. Again, let's take a water bottle a company which wants to stay ahead in the competitive markets. So how can we use this scramper method? Just uh, when we think of that substitute, we'll just think, okay, what uh, materials we can substitute uh, in place of plastic to make this water bottle? The, uh, can we use steel or can we use any biodegradable material? Or can we replace anything biodegradable material which decomposes and which is environmental and friendly to our bottle? Or and C stands for combine. Uh, where combine includes okay, what features can we combine with our water bottle? Like inbuilt filter can we combine inbuilt filtration for our water bottle, or we can give us a storage supplement of for vitamins, medicines to take along, or can we just give a handle to the bottle to carry it easily. And A stands for adapt, where we can adapt an existing idea that might not have worked before to solve a problem. Yeah, combine means adding a new idea. So how can we adapt the water bottle for different users or situations? Like uh, how can we make our water bottle useful for athletic? athletics or sports persons or how can we make our bottle useful to the travelers there we use this adapt thing and then modify as shown here modify an aspect of your situation or problem so okay what can we modify still in our bottle so can we modify the design of the cap or can we modify uh, it to be leak proof or can we make the cap easy to open or can we modify the shape of the bottle or size of the bottle or color of the bottle etc comes under modifying thing and p leads to p leads to put to another use so put to another use as the name itself says how can we use our bottle in another way not only for drinking water, can we use our bottle for any other thing? Like we have thermal flask, so we can use it for both hot water and cold water, or sometimes a hot beverage carrier, carrier etc. So like that, we can. How can we put another use our bottle? How uh, how our bottle serves multi purposes for stakeholders? That we have to think in the P of put to another use. And then E stands for eliminate. Eliminate or simplify a process or idea to get into it. So what can we eliminate from the bottle? Or how? what can we eliminate from the existing product? Like unnecessary stuff. Or some bottles will have external, uh, just some bottles will be some plain outside. So can we have some external grip? Or some waters will have some external grip outside. So can we remove that? That and all comes under the scrutiny phase. And then we go to reverse, where reverse the orientation or direction of the process or product we use. Like in this reverse, we come up with some crazy ideas. Like can we keep a cap down of our bottle too so that we can open it from down and clean it easily? So that that's that works like bottle having two caps or down we can put something a small box so that we can store our uh, 
what we can say many people will be eating badam every morning so that they can keep their badam down uh, under the bottle etc uh see as someone said remove the cap and use sensor in the bottle yeah please repeat reverse means so reverse is the uh, reverse in reverse way we will just reverse the orientation or direction of the process or product we go if we go in a one particular direction now we'll just come to another direction we'll just see from another point of view a vacuum sucker which will help to stick it to the place of storage yeah add a storage for medicine and bottles yeah that and all we can do so yeah reverse means like just reverse the orientation or point of view you are seeing and make a another point of view and another ideas to your product are you clear with reverse so that helps in scramper method and then we'll move to storyboarding so this is also one of an interesting method we have in our ideation technique this is widely so where do you think the storyboarding is used most any ideas guys any ideas where do we use the storyboarding more marketing okay okay let me tell you the storyboarding is mainly used in film and animation things and also in business and education also so when a uh, film director or a person come up with a story for an idea they'll just use the storyboarding technique so it will be easy to visualize for everyone it helps to translate abstract concept into clear visual narratives so what does storyboarding actually mean so it is visual representation of sequence of events or processes like whatever the idea we have we'll just represent it in visually in a sequential manner in the storyboarding like it may contain a illustration or images displayed in sequence or typically accompanying with notes or descriptions so the storyboarding helps in organizing the thoughts and plan out scenes step by step as i told they, they it is mostly used in film and animations like it is used for planning out scenes or step step by step why why storyboarding is important as i told every ideation technique has its unique uh, image or character so this is important because it clarifies our vision it enhances communication stimulates creativity and improve organization of thoughts so as as uh, as we tell our idea to someone they may understand or they may not understand it clearly but if we show it clearly in a fictional or view or if we show them in a video or photo or something then they might get an understanding okay this can be like this or this can be like that so that's where we use storyboarding and yeah i think we came to end of our session now i'll just take any doubts i'll just answer all your doubts so if any doubts you can text me or if it's difficult you can just unmute your mic so that or you can raise your hands one by one so that i can unmute your mic and ask you to speak don't worry about attendance they'll be taken so someone asked is the test phase nothing but a pre launch it's mostly 
how that pre launch but we can test it before launching also like yeah it's almost that thing nothing but a pre launch can can we represent a product in much better way either storyboarding yeah we can represent so if you have any doubts just you can unmute your self or raise your hand i'll unmute Uh, someone asked, can we get these PDFs? You'll, oh, I forgot. Like, I'll just tell you, you'll get you'll get all these short notes in refined way in, in our Instagram page, and you will get this recording in our YouTube. So, yeah. How's the attendance procedure? Like, uh, don't worry about attendance. Please concentrate on your sessions. You'll we'll take care of that. Uh, so as yesterday, oh sorry, day before yesterday, the instructor told you you must have eighty percent of attendance to get a certificate, and you must complete all the assignments we have given. Test phase can be used as a way to self marketing. Right. Yeah, we can do self marketing too. Okay, someone asked, How is user research different from user empathy? User empathy is where we go to users and ask about their problems before making a product. Where user research will go to the customers and ask about our products after making our product. So did you understand the difference between user research and user empathy? Companies prepared what they are building as a product, but in empathy phase, they find out it's not really a problem, but people should go with the product still uh, I guess uh, a company cannot go with that product still because in empathy phase, people are not really having a problem with that as like the company that is building the product may already uh, had that product existing or people are comfortable with the current qualities. So they can't go with that product. So what is different between mind mapping and storyboarding? Okay. In mind mapping, basically all these ideation techniques are same, but with unique characteristics. Like in mind mapping, we have a core problem statement. We make uh, uh, solutions regarding that problem statements. And from that solutions, again, we make any other solution or solutions regarding that problem statement like we connect each and every solution in that mind mapping whereas in storyboarding we go step by step we visualize everything by pictures you know you know cinematic way does the test phase of product help it to become product market fit yeah, it should help the product to be, uh, become product market fit. But I can't say it will take the product market 100% because uh, some like people may or may not understand the market strategies. Like, or uh, as I told, like this design thinking is not only about uh, people's needs, it's, it's also about the technical facilities available in the available with us and the business things so we have to combine all the things and check yeah one way to do survey can be google forms someone asked user research comes under which phase so we can 
take user research in test phase where we can like in test phase what we do is just uh get feedback from the prototype we have that is similar to the user research where we pre-launch a product and just get a feedback from that command and design thinking we have to sync our artist and designer together yeah you have to sync your your artistic skills and designing skills with that. and you you really need to be creative Someone asked where and how can we actually do the survey things? Like, can you give ideas? So surveys can be done in many ways, which you will learn in coming sessions. And like, we can just go to the, we, will, we can just gather a group of people, give our product and do a survey, or just we can pass a Google form to do a survey, to give a review on our product. These are some examples. And you'll know more about it in the coming sessions. Next class, software requirement. Yeah, in next class, you will be uh, going through Fusion thing. So you need to install Fusion, I guess. Everything they'll tell. So any particular doubts about this session? Today. Uh, please summarize all sessions as as uh, like we already uh, put a message in WhatsApp group summarizing all sessions. So you can please go check it. Is that short notes be provided? Yeah, short notes will be provided in our Instagram page. So please do follow. Scan this Instagram uh, scanner and follow our Instagram. And you can follow our YouTube channel, the Product Design Club IIT Madras for this thing.